Right. Welcome back to Fast Money. We've got a Bitcoin alert, the cryptocurrency making big gains this week, up nearly 15 percent. I think digital currency and the receptivity, particularly millennials receptivity of, uh, of technology and cryptocurrency is real. I can't invest in this. My risk management team won't even let me touch it. Now you have institutional investors saying, hey, wait, I got to buy this thing. There's only four assets you can own in the world, a stock, a bond, a currency or a commodity. And we think every single one of them is going to get digitized. You know, if there's another downturn and banks say, oh, we have a hard time lending now, okay, well, I don't need you because I can tokenize my, my loan that I want to use to buy that condo there. And that's what I'm going to do. So now we don't need banks anymore. That is what's crazy. From the middle of America, welcome to the Oklahoma City Real Estate Show, covering local market data, news, and reports to arm you with information you need to empower your investing and strengthen your American rights. Top Realtor, investor, husband, father, and veteran. Here is your host, Landon Witt. For more information and to listen or watch online, visit OKCRealEstateShow.com. Okay, I want to welcome our guest to episode 92 of the Oklahoma City Real Estate Show. On today's show, we're talking all about the new magical world of cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is once a novelty, and now it's here in the real world, uh, helping a real estate transaction happen. I'm here with uh, Cheryl and Justin. Cheryl Lowe is a broker out of Austin, Texas, who performed the first business Bitcoin real estate transaction and what we believe on record in the United States back in summer of 2017. Uh, Cheryl's going to share with us today a little bit of the journey from the 80s on through today on what the, the real estate world has gone through from a brokerage standpoint and what we can expect going forward with the technology and the industry. And Justin's then going to chime in and give us a little bit of information on the back work of how a Bitcoin transaction works and the benefits to you as a seller or a buyer in a transaction. So Cheryl, welcome to the show today. Thank you. Nice to be here. It's uh, up and coming for sure. It ended when it began uh, four transactions within eight weeks in November and December of 2017. And, you know, I've been a broker in Austin since probably the 90s and agents since 1984. So I've really grown with this city. Um, the mm -hmm. first buyer that I encountered was in his 60s. He's also a finance guy. And that seems to be, um, at least it was then, the, the demographic for Bitcoin buyers. Um, when my broker decided to take that transaction uh, to the internet, I mean, he just did a press release and it went viral, so to speak. So um, Cooper Sotheby's was on CNN. We were on Bloomberg, CNBC. Um, Justin and I personally were on one of the local networks. I was on two of them here at Austin. So it was a big deal. I didn't realize it at the time, Landon, but um, now it's going to be bigger. At that time, Bitcoin was 19,000. It's now very close to that. Um, it's interesting because I thought we might have a bit more activity. But it'll probably ramp up. It probably will. Hmm. It's just that now in Austin, our price point is so much higher. Anyway, um, Bitcoin buyers generally I want to remain very much under the radar. They don't want their addresses. There's no publicity with them at all. I'm not sure it's going to stay that way because I think as the United States becomes, and it's supposed to in January, um, Maybe your listeners can can let us know that, or somebody else might know. That we're headed for a cashless society, so mm. it's going to be more and more so. Um, the really important thing is you have to have a willing seller, and people. Texas is a bit more conservative than the rest of the United, you know, parts of the United States, either coast. I've always felt like it's 10 to 15 years behind California. I lived in California. 
Hmm. for 14 years. And I think that a seller has to be convinced, has to have an agent, a buyer's agent, that is really pro crypto, so to speak, understands mm -hmm. it. That may bring us the really ramp up with the millennial generation. The buyer's agents that don't understand it, um, that's not good for a seller. <laughs> to be encouraging mm -hmm. so the seller has to be online the next ingredient is um a great title company a title company with a progressive owner understands <clears throat> how it works and it's really the buyers want to get it closed in days um mm -hmm. one day two mm -hmm. days i worked 24 7 i did Four transactions. And, and that's and that's because of the market volatility. That's right. Right. They want both the buyer and seller want to know where they're getting in. Exactly. They see that that nineteen thousand mark and they want to maximize that. And so they're on it. And that has to be explained to a seller. Mm. Um, thank goodness I had some great buyers agents that were were right with me on that. Mm -hmm. Um I also was, I had Justin with me, which helped a lot because uh, it really takes almost two people. Um, and I had listing agents that were very, very cooperative. People wanted to get their properties, agents wanted to get their properties sold. And the benefit to the agent and to the seller is the speed of the transaction. What's What are the benefits, the inherent benefits of doing a Bitcoin transaction? I think um, speed and they were very accepting of the price. They didn't, they didn't negotiate. They didn't. Mm. They bought it as is. And you um, gave you gave them list price. It was essentially list price, or were you going yeah. above list? List price, list okay. price, because we were really the only deal on the table at that point in time. Austin is now very much multiple offers. On I everything. see. This was back 2017. Okay. Yeah. So the first transaction, 2017, you've done four, and, and these are, I think it's important to note, these are large volume transactions. These are not uh, $80,000 rental property that needs to no, be fixed up. No, there's nothing under a million dollars. Um, two of them were 2 million, 2.3. And these are from heavy, heavy Bitcoin owners. I mean, they had had Bitcoin a long time. They understand it. They're also, they have to trust both agents, trust the process. But let me mm -hmm. uh, be very clear about the fact that this varies from state to state. Varies very much from state to state. Um, but it's like a stock. You have to take it to uh, Coinbase or BitPay and it has to be converted to U.S. dollars. Mm. Um, I think it's going to be well known as we go along. But to be honest with you, the sellers would go to their lawyers. The lawyers didn't want to touch it. They but let me let me clarify that it only has to be done. It only has to be converted to U.S. dollars if you're going through a title company with title insurance and a title policy. If you have a seller that's willing to accept P2P crypto and you have a buyer that's willing to just take the home as is without title insurance, title policy, all that, <clears throat> which, you know, if you've got brand new construction um, would probably be something that would be acceptable by both buyer and seller because you know it's a brand you know it's a brand new home and you know it's probably got all the things that it needs to have or if it's just somebody who's comfortable in real estate if you've got a savvy investor they can just go p to p and that's it it doesn't you, you don't have to have any of the compliance or any of that they just transfer bitcoin from wallet to wallet transactions done and they could transfer title or deed to their attorneys, and that's it. Hmm. There you go. So, so you don't necessarily have to do that. You can go. You can absolutely go P to P without having to convert. I in that and that, uh, Justin. I'm glad you brought that up because there was probably 50 percent of the listeners that, as soon as she said cash, 
they were boom, they're 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 almost checking out. And so yeah, that's an important thing to bring up is that this is a wallet to wallet transfer, direct P to P, like he said, uh, that can happen. Now, now, Cheryl, uh, talk to us a little bit about the sentiment. Okay, so you went to title. You've done four of these where it's basically cash of the last second and then and then converted. Mm-hmm. Now, right. how hard is it going to be to get that same client, that same mindset, to where they would feel comfortable transferring money through or transferring currency or or let's just even say the commodity, transferring commodity to the other person without. Uh, having a title involved, how hard is that? You've you've talked to these folks. What do you? you know, Landon, just it is much more familiar with that. But I mean that, the I mean the actual like we we like to talk about a lot of stuff up in the air, right? Yeah. Hypothetical. This is what we can do. But the reality yeah. is, a buyer and seller have to be comfortable with this. That's right. And that means you selling that seller on here's the benefit of it. How do you? How far do you think we are from that? Hmm, probably about sixty days. <laughs> I just think once the you know I've been watching the finance markets a little bit. Um, we're talking about a cashless society, Landon. I think as soon as people see the you know things like Apple Pay and crypto is going to come up, Justin probably is much more really in touch with that because it's it's y'all's generation that that's going to really be touched by that the technology well, the te- technological transfer so that's and i'll tell you something else landon i had a i we went out to a friend of mine's ranch out in deep west texas this weekend um and we were on our way back and his little brother um who has worked, went to Duke University, big time finance guy, uh, lived in New York and worked there, now lives back in Austin and is huge in this crypto world. The company that he's working for now, and this is very preliminary, I haven't had a chance to talk to him before this meeting, um, is now making, is now offering financing based on, they will, they will lend you money based on the amount of Bitcoin you have. You don't have to cash in your Bitcoin. They will loan you money based on your Bitcoin at a certain at a certain rate and you pay it back as if it was, you know, as if you were leveraging an asset. Mm. So it's a secure debt. Mm -hmm. It's a secure debt through the amount of Bitcoin that you have. It's it blew my mind. He told me that yesterday. I mean, I guess that was yesterday around three or four o'clock in the afternoon. I tried to call to call his brother to figure it out, but yeah, lending money on Bitcoin as if it were a tangible asset. Well, that's what like the bond. That's what the like, bond market yeah. is when they're when the bond market right. backs. So, but the bond market is in something stable like a government, right? Our country. Right. So now, what we're right. trying to say is the peer to peer network of cryptocurrencies are essentially such a stable platform because of the the global, you know, transparency that it has that now we can back financing. Okay, so let's move to a really important topic here as we're as we're getting well into this interview. Um, So taxes. Nobody wants to talk about taxes, but we need to talk about taxes. What does that look like in the future? What does it look like right now? (laughs) That's, <laughs> yes. uh, well, it's going to vary again, probably. What kind of taxes, Landon, are you talking about? Property or income? Well, so, for example, and, and I know the state of Oklahoma, the tax assessor assesses the tax off of the last purchase. That's so right. Now we've got, yeah, so we got the county. Yep. Uh, so, okay, so in Texas, it's the same. Uh, so what are you reporting to the county then, if it's a peer-to-peer, and you're just doing a, a quick claim deed or whatever. What? Yeah. How does the county appra- appraising the property now? They don't. They don't even. They don't even know it transferred the title. I hate to say that out loud on a <laughs> podcast. They don't even know it. They, they honestly don't even know it transferred title. Yeah. In Texas, I mean, it's recorded, you but reveal it anyway. Any, you know, it's all closed. Mm-hmm. You're not so, allowed to reveal. Yes. So that so that to me immediately begs the second benefit to it of I'm willing to pay more money for your property, Mr. Seller, because I'm buying in Bitcoin. I'll give you X amount more 
because of all these benefits that I'm getting as well. We do the same thing in investment real estate when we oftentimes will pay more than the rent to value ratio because we're getting those tax benefits and other things along the way that we can then bid higher than our competitors because of a buy and hold strategy versus a flipper or whatever. So Bitcoin is now layering on top of that, that we can now outbid in those multiple offer scenarios because those inherent savings. So I would say forecasting 2021 that if you have a Bitcoin buyer that is, let's say they bought early on and the Bitcoin has gone up and up and up to them, you know, their money is actually, it's like free money, if you will, and they can bid more. Do you see that being something that would be uh, a, a multiple offer winner in 2021? Absolutely. I, Justin's opinion. Um, yeah, I, I mean, um, yes and no. It depends on who your seller is. Um, you know, when it comes, the other thing that's really funny landed to, to kind of tap onto that subject is that we had one of the sellers on one of the properties. He did not want, he originally was thinking about taking a P2P transaction and what's really funny is that if he would have, I think that was at, it was at like maybe 16, five or 17. If he would have taken a P to P as opposed to taking it in U S currency, he would have made an extra half a million dollars. Wow. Just in the jump wow. from where he, from where he received it at. So mm -hmm. I think that you'll see people who are tapped into the financial world will think, okay, and they'll base it like buying stocks. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to sell my house right now and crypto's at 16.5, but we saw it touch 19 and with all the uncertainty and what's going on in the world and all of that, they'll look at it like a financial, like a fi like a stock transaction. All right, I'll sell my house now at 17.5 and take a P to P, betting on the fact that it'll maybe go up to 20 or 21. Wait for it to okay, get to 21 so and then cash that in. Justin, I'm, 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 okay, idea here then. Why don't yeah. we write the contract in a way to where we guarantee a certain price margin that your house will be worth in Bitcoin? For example, we create the contract on day one, and then we guarantee that by day whatever it is, kind of like a, a locked interest rate. You know, when we lock a rate, you know, we get under right. con, we lock a rate. And that, that banking institution is banking that the interest rate will either go down further or stay the same. Same thing with us. We lock that Bitcoin rate and then our buyer is guaranteeing within a margin that I will pay this. So in other words, if Bitcoin goes down in value, I got to bring more to the closing table. You see what I'm saying? Um, yes, I do. I have learned one from my mother and two from the world. I will guarantee <laughs> anything ever based on dollar value. However, I could strongly encourage mm -hmm. or strongly suggest um, I don't like to guarantee anything in the real estate because of especially because of what I've seen happen in Austin. Mm -hmm. Um it's in, even in such a solid place with such a solid market. Um, but even then, yes, I do think that's a, that, you know, to be able to say, look, this is what I could, what I could suggest could happen. Well, Guaranteed, it's the same, but it's the but yes. same, it's the same contract we did with the U S currency with the national association of realtors of saying, we put in a contract for 30 days for the option to purchase your home. And if we oh, don't yes. purchase okay. the home within 30 days, yeah. We lose our earnest money, right? Right. Five thousand, right. ten, thirty thousand, whatever that our earnest money is, we're going to lose that. Not to mention, right. they may come sue us anyways for failure to perform. So, what's the difference then in a thirty-day contract saying I'm going to pay you this value of of Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin, and then in thirty days, if I don't close because Bitcoin's in the toilet, I lose my earnest money. In both ah, ways, both okay. well, both parties. A little bit, I, I, so you're you're that, res in that instance, yeah yes. yeah. So the earnest yeah, money is I'm it. saying, either way, I'm paying you this earnest money as an option to buy in 30 days. But if either buyer or seller decide no way, I mean I don't know I don't know if the seller can have an option. We might have to. I mean I don't know if the buyer uh, will agree to that. Yeah, it, I guess it would depend. I mean that it, again, it's a whole new world yeah. of. Of, of real estate when it comes to crypto and buyers and sellers can either adapt or they can 
you know, stay and stay on the same track that they've been on for the past, you know, hundred years or whatever. Well, it's it's so, it's going to be the brokers writing these these uh, contracts that enable both parties to win. If we don't do that, then it's going to be a a cluster you know, of, of two buyers and sellers trying to get together with their iPhones, freaking with an attorney saying, okay, are you ready? Do you, have you signed it yet? Okay. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to push send and then you're going to sign and, and we'll do it. Okay. One, two, three, go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's, it's literally going to yeah. be that if we don't come in and say, Hey, let's make this professional where everybody wins. Nothing's awkward. And I right. think that right there will stabilize cryptocurrency when those type of volume starts to happen. There's no other transaction that I know of that's going to be large volume like this. Right? Uh, probably not. I mean, property will property will most likely be the largest. I mean, uh, yeah, you're exactly right. I'm now, I'm, now you've got me stumped trying to think of something yeah. that's the same. Well, it's it, it's uh, going to be case by case. Like you guys have done four, so you're the you're you're essentially among the the top one percent of real estate agents on the planet in the universe on Bitcoin. Yes, I mean, that's true. Yeah, that that is yeah, true. Absolutely. I mean, if you Google real estate Bitcoin transactions, which is where I found you guys, hello. You're it. Yeah. You're you're among like ten. There's ten real estate agents that we know of. Now, of course, the black market and all this and different things. And that brings up our last point here. Um, so if you're in a country like, let's say, China or or another country that may limit the amount of currency that you can export out of their country in a given year, yeah. Bitcoin eliminates that. You yeah. can now transfer commodities in and out of a country. Will know about that. You can transfer anything. And let me tell you what, Landon, I lived um, I lived in from the September of 2016 until January of 2018. I actually lived in Malta. Hmm. And Malta, Malta is now the cryptocurrency capital of the world. Um, it's a tiny little island country, 90 miles yeah, south why? of Sicily. Why? Um, <laughs> well, there's a there's some speculation on that. It's you know it's a um, it's a very unregulated country uh, for the most part. Um, you can actually you know the fact that you can buy a Maltese passport for around 1.1 million euros, you can just go there and buy the passport. You can do that in a lot of countries, but it's one of the most sought after passports in the world because of how many. Because of how free and easy you can travel throughout not only the EU but the rest of the world with a Maltese passport, um, it's kind of the it's the online gaming capital of the world as well. Hmm. Um, but I think it's I think it's mostly because it's a very unregulated country and you know it's it's a very interesting place. I learned after living there for a little over a year, but it is the cryptocurrency capital of the world. And as much as there is the currency regulations on as you said, taking anything from ten thousand dollars and above, in and out of anywhere with crypto, that eliminates that. You can transfer money like that from country to country, and nobody is the wiser, right? Mm -hmm. um, which poses a lot of problems, but also a lot of opportunity. Um, where that will go and how it is taken advantage of um, should be, should you know prove to be very be very interesting over the next few years uh but again i that's the only speculation on my part so for those that say i don't i'm not touching anything digital this is wacky money as as warren buffett has said i think this is wacky money or something like that I, I, don't quote me on it but he said something to that effect and you got wacky money you got all this so i think it's important to note if you are if you are total bull on the american dollar and you say no way jose the benefit to you as an American currency holder is that there is now an, another option on the playing field. And this is the same thing that happens in the free market is when you have competition, you get a better product. So now the Federal Reserve has been notified that there are a growing fast number of people doing business with cryptocurrencies, which means you're not going to get tax dollars on any of that money. So you now have to come out with a product or a service that competes better with this alternative option. So 
to all those that say I would never touch Bitcoin, Bitcoin actually may be the answer to making monetary policy in the United States better making politicians talk about some of these issues louder and more clear. So either case, our generation has a tool now that can say to the United States government, we need change or else we're going to exit this monetary policy. And that in and of itself is a beautiful thing to see. Justin and Cheryl, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's been a pleasure to have you guys. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Thank you, Landon. We appreciate it. You bet. Yeah. Anytime. For more information and to listen or watch online, visit OKCRealEstateShow.com.